To give some context as to what I'm doing with scripted content, this is basically one of the few ideas that I had with only featured scripted content, and not just be plain text you can read. I did mention in a community post that this would happen, but this is the only exception as I'm literally giving my personal thoughts on what I think about my recent achievements or levels that I tried for a while, instead of just giving facts about a topic. Bit of a spoiler, you will hear me obliterate a couple levels when these kinds of videos will be pushed out, and there are two levels in this case. I was personally not a fan of verifying this in the first place as I was only doing silent silhouette as a pure boredom thing back in 2019. Although, now that I've re-verified the balanced version, what do I think now? It's definitely a mix of fun and not so fun. The pre-drop bit you can basically breeze through without much confidence, assuming you're good with the swing copter and straight flying. The initial drop before 50% is where all my problems come with this level, but that's not at the fall of the remake, but rather at the fall of the silent silhouette for having obnoxious gameplay. This percentage section used to be a lot less fun, there used to be two block high sloops in the jitter click part before the ship part, and I ended up taking them out in 2019. The other 50% is balanced just well without a massive difficulty spike like right at the beginning of the drop, so I can confidently say that Restrained Lyman, despite it being from 2019, which Real Vet has improved a lot of decoration since then, is pretty solid to play. I originally thought the Invincible was just a black and white Sonic Wave with no gameplay changes, but after trying it while playing Sonic Wave, I was maddened by the buffs. This level is a balanced nightmare, and although the pre-drop is as annoying as it is with the initial ship part, the buffs on the wave parts just bring this level down as the worst Sonic Wave remake you can play. It's actually worse than Soundwave Destroyer, but this level has a bit of story. It was originally made and hack verified by the real Sneaky, who back in 2.0 was really suspicious for cheating the game and hack verifying down base. Sneaky was claiming to get close on Sonic Wave, and this is what he hacked verified. It actually received enough attention where the community was divided with many people believing him, and this was mostly because he used the verification video to quit the game. Now, five years later, and I'm going to try and re-verify this legitimately, and I hate every bit of it. Please, do not play this version of Sonic Wave, I beg you. How does the old Delta interface hold up? Well, it's mostly easier than the current Delta interface, although there's really only one threat you have to deal with, as every part you can get incredibly consistent at with enough time, and that's the 25% ball part. This ball part has two very precise orbs timing that, while you can get consistent, will die to quite a bit if you can't nail the timing consistently. But aside from that, and let's say you do get consistent with that, old Delta interface is more enjoyable than the current rated version. I would consider this easier than Deadly Club Set version 2, just because of a lack of mirror portals and the fact you can get super consistent quickly. ILL team, if you're watching this, do swap this and Deadly Clubs of version 2 in terms of placements on the ILL list. And speaking of the devil, this actually used to be humanly impossible considering the time this was released in, which was around 1.8 to 1.9. I have seen Lucalizer done a world record run at the time in 2.0, which gave this level some potential to be beaten, and then Akira Kurisu got 51%, I got 63%, and NZX got 78%, but what do I think about this? It's definitely a nightmare to play. The only reason this is kind of a pain to play with this is because of the mirror portals, spam at the dropship, and the diagonal ship strike fly. Both of these parts are the hardest parts in the level just because physics change when you go through the mirror portals, at least that's what I heard. Doing a 60% to 100% run shows the second half is a massive threat once you get in. This is harder than old Delta interface in my eyes, and I probably won't be beating this because I don't want another miserable experience. And this is my hardest demon if rated, but I will say it's my hardest level. This is actually a level I was looking forward to when I heard about it, Given that I was so into Death Corridor and was looking forward to Gunslinger Corridor as well, Curse Corridor was on the top of my list as the levels I want to beat despite my skill. It's definitely way harder than Restraint Lineman, and it's actually between Digital Descent and Sonic Wave difficulty. 
according to the unrated demon list, which make this a top 65 demon. I actually found this to be enjoyable for a really difficult extreme. The only problem I had was the 50% wave par, but that was more of a me problem because I suck at wave badly. Thankfully I did get consistent near the end of my journey. Somehow I was only able to die at 75% and I almost died to the final mini wave part twice, making my 100% run my luckiest run so far. But wrapped up, please Ray Curse Corridor. Please. I honestly enjoyed Deadly Corridor, but I did not enjoy Deadly Corridor Redux due to the buffs, so the same fate as the Invincible. If this was the Metal Face version being redecorated without any buffs or nerfs, I would totally give this a 10 out of 10 with play again, but the buffs brought this down quite a bit. The last drop ship before the slow cube and ship part near the end is really awkward to pass and could make you die there a few times, but the final ship part contains the most awkward stray fly I've ever faced and I died there once. Though the decoration looks sick, I just am not a fan of this as Metal Face's Deadly Corridor. Sorry Falcor team. Though this doesn't stop me by saying this level also deserves a demon rating. I regret making and playing this. Well to be fair Gunslinger Corridor Z did kickstart Abandoned Corridor just because I was able to finally decorate after 6 years of being with the game. The overall level is just something I regret even announcing and making. It's actually one of two things that boosted my channel's subscriber count for the wrong reasons and is done purely to mess with me. And the other would be Hoovy Dundee. I honestly would say if it wasn't for Gunslinger Corridor Z, my channel would be at just under 1000 subscribers and would reach that goal once I made the disapproval video. I would have honestly been fine with me being known for Abandoned Corridor or maybe even Curse Corridor, but this level is just not good overall for what it was made for. Now, the overall level itself when playing it is better than playing the currently rated Gunslinger Corridor due to the gameplay changes and balances. It is a lot harder than the rated version, I will say for sure, but it's only a matter of time before I pick this level up again and verify it. Can't wait for my channel to be boosted in subscribers for the wrong reasons again.